So now if we come through and just control shift click this one and this one, you can see we kind of have our framework starting to be generated. So this is similar to our framework we have on the actual pendant with the outer and the interior parts. So we have that kind of uh, generate out into these nice polygroups now that we can use in our panel loops. So now going back to our image again, we need to actually gen start generating the actual polygroups that are going to form the actual weave pattern on the outer edge here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this tool. So I have two of them and I'm just going to make sure I just have one of them visible and then control shift click to bring it all back. Now at this point <clears throat> I basically want to uh, leave enough of the actual borders between these frames so when I draw my panel loops um, they'll kind of overlap them. So I need to get rid of this blue part and this back panel but then I want to leave um, this other stuff here so when I actually draw these weave patterns um, I have enough geometry to kind of overlap the border panels I just set up. So I'm just going to first isolate the red panel here and then I'm going to just grab the back and assign a new polygroup to it. So just mask it really quick and then control W then control shift to make them all visible. Control shift click the blue twice and then the back once. And so we end up with something like this. Now I want to put all this as one polygroup so mask it again and control W and now that's all one polygroup. And so now this is a, a good polygroup to kind of start our looping kind of elements. So first thing, or next thing, is to come to Modify Topology and I want to delete this hole here and the hole on the back. So I'm just going to do a Delete Hidden. And now I'm going to come through and actually start drawing my weave pattern that I kind of want to be reflected on the actual object. So if we go back to the original design here, you can see it is kind of flow around the actual pendant. Um, for this demo, I'm actually going to turn on symmetry and use the radial uh, option to kind of generate them in a symmetrical method. But you can, you know, if you want, go in and actually hand paint all these loops out so that they're all asymmetrical around the actual model. So to do this, I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to set my brush size to a small kind of thing here. I'm going to turn on symmetry up here underneath transform and I'm going to turn on radial symmetry. And now we're just going to see which way the radial symmetry is going. So X is not the correct one. So go back up and I'm going to try Z. And Z is not the correct one. So one more time with Y. So there we go. Now with radial symmetry, you can come and you can set how many times you want the radial count to repeat. So 8 is a little bit too much for this pendant. So I'm going to come down to 4. And so now when I kind of draw with my mask, it's going to update on all of them. On, or at least 4 axes. So I'm going to turn off polyframes here so I can actually see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to come in and just start drawing my weave work on the actual model. So you can, you know, be as precise as you want to be with kind of your weaves. You can also use uh, alphas to generate your weaves as well. It just depends on um, what kind of style you're kind of going for. Now I'm kind of overlapping uh, some of these areas here because I want them to kind of overlap the actual border elements in which I created as well. So I'm just pulling these off and kind of overlapping them on the sides here some. And I don't really want to leave any kind of gaps that are too large because this would, you know, in theory be the framework of our pendant. And so these are supporting elements on our actual object here. So if we leave too much space in between, our pendant's going to be really flimsy. So just make sure you have enough surface area kind of covered and all your uh, kind of curls touch where they need to be touching. If you get to like parts like this, you can do an alt mask. So if I hold alt, it'll erase a mask. So you can come in and kind of clean up these areas a little bit as you do your masking. And so once you get something similar to this, um, you can hit control W, which will apply a polygroup to that masked area. So you can see now all those curls have now become their own polygroup, which is really, really nice. And we can hold control shift and click and isolate those curls so you get them uh, looking like that. So now we can just kind of see how this looks really quick before we move forward. So I'm just going to come back to Subtool here and turn on the border one. And so you can see we would end up with a pendant that would look similar to this. So you can see we have some overlapping curlies along the edges and I have some nice open work along the sides. So that looks pretty good. Now we just need to go in and um, 
use the panel loops to add some uh, thickness and smooth out some of these edges. So first we're going to go in and we're going to add the panel loops to the border and then we'll go in and add the panel loops to the curls. So I'm going to come back over here and select the border elements. You can see we're still broken into those nice poly groups. I'm going to come down here to the geometry tab, go to edge loop, and you can see here are the uh, new panel loop functions that are inside of ZBrush 4R5. First thing I want to do here is make sure that um, I have double on, I have my loops on. Uh, I'm going to change my elevation to zero and what elevation does here it's going to determine you know which way the panel loops are going to generate the geometry so if it's an elevation of zero it's going to take the panel loops and generate a thickness inward and outward based on this slider here so if you want to adjust this uh, the panel loops to just go inward you could change your elevation to negative 100 and if you just want your panel loops to go outward you change your elevation to positive 100 so I want a blend between the negative and the positive, so I'm just going to keep it at zero. For thickness, I'm going to come up here and type in something around 0 0.05. And you can undo this and change it um, over and over until you get the thickness you kind of want. And then we're just going to hit panel loops. And you can see what it did is it took all those separate polygroups and it generated these panel loops um, out of it. Now as you can see here we have some, some kind of warpiness that's uh, kind of being generated from the loops. Now fear not, this is uh, extremely easy to um, get rid of inside of ZBrush 4R5. So basically at this first stage here we're looking at the thickness of our actual object here and see if we want our thickness to change. So 0 0.05 looks, a might, I might need a little more thickness to that. So I'm going to undo that and get back to this here and change my thickness to 0 0.08 and then hit panel loops again. So that's a little more thickness on there, so that looks a little bit better. Now one thing you'll notice is that on these panel loops, you can see the side profile here, has a profile that's kind of flat. Um, so it's going angle flat, angle basically. And what controls this uh, profile here is actually this bevel profile over here, this curve setting over here. So whatever this kind of looks like is going to be how this is generated on your model. So this is extremely flat right now, so I've got hard angle, hard angle, hard angle, and you can see on my panel loops it's actually mimicking the actual curve you see in this window. So if I want this to be kind of a smooth transition for these panel loops, I'm going to hit undo to get back to where we were originally. And I'm just going to come over here and just hit reset first, which will give us this flat profile. And I'm just going to click and drag in the middle here, and drag about 50% up. And then I'm going to take this slider here and just kind of scale this out to get this to bubble a little bit more. And then I'm going to select the ones in the corner, and just kind of slim them down some, like so. And then I'm going to add a new point here and kind of bubble it up and add the slider so I get this kind of transition. When you're working with these graphs, any of the ones with the things, if you don't like a point that you added, all you have to do is click on the point and drag it off and it'll get rid of it. So that's one little uh, trick to kind of get um, these kind of points generated pretty quick and pretty easy. So if you don't want this top one anymore, you can just drag it off. And now you have this kind of nice kind of curve um, being generated here. So that looks pretty good. And now if I hit panel loops again, you can see this now should be a little more rounded than it was originally. So it's not as harsh as that original um, plateau kind of stair stepping was. So that should be pretty good. And when I actually smooth this out, it'll actually smooth out um, the kind of areas in between here. So now that we did this kind of hidden functionality with the actual uh, panel loops here, I need to clear the mask and get rid of this center portion. So I'm just going to clear my mask, control shift click these center pieces to get rid of them. So you're just left with the actual border objects like so. And then I'm going to go up to, or go down here to the modified topology again. And I'm going to just do delete hidden. So now I just have these border elements visible on my screen. You can see they're all nice and grouped.